I was in Zambia and on my first safari. At six years old, I wanted nothing more than to see an elephant. I had spent hours watching it on the Discovery Channel. Not only to watch you ride, we spotted some antelope. They were cool, but not that different from the deer that roamed freely in my yard in the Pacific Northwest. As if learning the alphabet, that day on the safari, we went from elephant, or antelope to zebra. I was amazed at the bright, stark contrast between their black and white stripes. It was like meeting sunglasses for one eye at a time. However, the zebra were so much like horses, my six-year-old self lost interest rather quickly. It's hot out here. When does it get fun, Mom? Just then, the ground began to shake. I thought it was a jeep when I whipped my head around to see a huge African elephant staring us down, his ears flapped, causing a breeze in the air. This was unlike anything I'd ever seen on the Discovery Channel. More rumbling started, and a smaller elephant ran out from the jungle. Aw, how cute. But just then, the ground began to shake violently. I thought I was going to fall out of the jeep. I jumped into my mother's lap and covered my ears to mask the deafening trumpet of the elephants. They ran past us because they were chasing the baby into the other side of the jungle, and they were gone as fast as they had appeared. That was incredible. There is no way to describe an elephant's intimidating size, sound, and power until you meet one face to face. However, there have been several times since that safari when elephant-sized fear has shaken my foundation. When I was starting fifth grade in a new school, I began to think, Uma, what if you can't keep up? What if your teachers or classmates don't like you? But it was then I had a brilliant idea. I could run for student senate. I already had some experience in public speaking, and I could gain popularity that way. It was perfect. I told that voice in my head, I got this. Over the next few weeks, me and my speaking coach prepared the perfect election speech. I even handed out little notebooks and erasers, which said a vote for Uma. I was feeling confident, hopeful, and excited. But then came the day of the election. I was chosen to speak first. Ugh, nobody wants to be first. I took the mic with shaking hands and opened my mouth to speak. My mind went blank. I couldn't remember any of the things I had worked on for the last few weeks. I stared into the faces of my expected friends, classmates, and teachers, and my face went red hot with embarrassment. I wished the ground would just swallow me whole, but it didn't, and I ran back to my seat and watched everybody else give I thought to be flawless speeches. That's when I began to doubt. What are people going to say to you? I began to wonder if I had anything important to say, whether I could give a good performance, no matter my time, ability, or energy exerted. I started to doubt because my entire foundation had been shaky. I started to wonder if doubt had been the cause for almost every failure I'd experienced. I thought back to another occasion when I was auditioning for a play. I had felt extremely confident in my delivery of the required monologue, like the day of the election. But when I arrived at the audition, I heard other kids talking about how harsh the judge was. Uh-oh, that didn't sound very good. It was then I began to doubt. Once again, all the confidence I had from moments before began slowly melt away. And I walked onto that stage, not feeling confident, but thinking about every possible way that I could fail. And it's no wonder I didn't perform as well as I knew I could have, because I was so worried about measuring up in somebody else's standards that I didn't measure up at all in my own. I was trying so hard to fit the mold that the first judge had created, I forgot to do what I wanted, and I forgot to have fun. It was then that I realized doubt was my downfall. It had always been. But then I began to wonder if you could change a positive thought into a negative one in a matter of minutes. Could it work the other way around? Could you change a negative thought to a positive one in a matter of minutes? Flip the switch and ditch the doubt. I was going to try it. I started to focus more on my own passions and not what my friends wanted to do. I realized confidence was a lot easier to maintain when you're doing what you love. 
The Mayo Clinic has some ideas about ways you can increase your self-esteem and self-confidence. Number one, but identify the common triggers that let doubt settle in. If you're like me, it can be a new school, a big presentation, or an audition. Number two, be aware of what you're thinking to yourself. Would you say the same thing to your best friend? And lastly, number three, always remember you have the power to convert negative thoughts into positive ones. Flip the switch and ditch the doubt. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> I began to find my fascination in public speaking. I began to take part in more summits, conferences, and even stages like this. I had found my confidence, and it was a lot easier for me to be confident when I found my fascination. Flip the switch and ditch the doubt. Seems easy, right? Not for me. It took two botched student, se uh, student sentence runs or whatever, and then it took three botched auditions before I was able to rank a uh, land a minor role. If you want to find your fascination like I did, then this is what I would suggest to do. Think about what fascinates you. Go ahead, I'll wait. <laughs> now what feelings does that bring up? Is there a voice in the back of your head telling you that's a stupid idea? Try to imagine a situation in which you're doing that action or whatever it is, succeeding, feeling carefree, and just overall having fun. Flip the switch and ditch the doubt. Life is like a safari. We feel boredom, annoyance, and fear in a matter of minutes. But when it's that doubt that keeps you from becoming who you're meant to be, keeps you from growing towards your success, and keeps you from having all that doubt taken away, then it's long past time to ditch it.